This just in, millions of people have vanished and no one knows where they've gone or why they've been taken. A conspiracy theory has made its way across Twitter, TikTok, and various forums. This theory, they're calling it the rapture, but authorities cannot comment at this time. If you're watching this video after these things have happened, pay close attention and make sure to watch until the end because I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to survive the tribulation with your soul intact. Who would have thought those crazy, kooky Christians were right? All those who have placed their trust in Jesus as their savior have vanished in the blink of an eye. That thing called the rapture that everyone says is not in the Bible, but actually is if you look up the word harpazo. Yeah, it happened and you have been left behind along with billions of other people, all panicking and waiting for the governments of the world to help them ease their fears, to tell them there's nothing to worry about and that peace and safety of all human beings is their number one priority. Once they say this, know that the Bible states what's really going to happen next. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But let's back up a bit to explain what in the world is going on now that you have been left behind. For the past 2,000 years since the resurrection of Jesus, Christians have been spreading the great news that Jesus Christ has come to save all those who put their trust in Him. But He also said there will come a time when He returns and those who are not ready will have to undergo the tribulation and the judgment of God. The tribulation is a time period when the Lord will accomplish at least two things. He will complete his discipline of the nation of Israel, which rejected Christ at his first coming, and he will judge the unbelieving, godless inhabitants of the earth. But right before these things unfold, the rapture of the church takes place, and Jesus the bridegroom gathers his bride, the church, for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now the concept of the marriage supper is better understood in light of the wedding customs in the time of Christ, which you can learn more about in the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, looking closely at Jesus' parable of the ten virgins. But what's important to understand is that since the Feast of Pentecost, which took place nearly 2,000 years ago, exactly 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit has indwelled Christians and is present in the world and is the only force in society that has kept evil in check, restrained, and held back since the resurrection of Jesus. When believers are removed or raptured and the Spirit lets go of its restraining power, then there is no restraining force left in society against evil. As a result, there will be a tremendous vacuum on the earth and the Antichrist is going to take his place on the throne that was promised to Jesus and he will attempt to rule with a one world government for the next seven years, demanding that the world worship him. The Bible calls this the tribulation and says that during the tribulation, a great deception will take over the people. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 we read, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time? For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth, and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What this deception is, I don't know. But if you're watching this after the rapture, you may have a better idea of what it is. Perhaps the governments blame the disappearances on aliens. And as crazy as that sounds, it's not a bad guess considering we've been peppered with alien sightings and propaganda for the last 80 to 100 years. Or it could be explained away as the Great Awakening. In New Age circles, many have spoken and taught that the human race is about to have a Great Awakening and those who are not ready 
will be purged. This option, I believe, may be more likely than the former because those teachings come from the pit of hell and are just a continuation of Satan's age-old paganistic rebellion of God. Others may blame it on a virus, but that lie would only work if the bodies of those raptured were left behind, and I don't see any indication from the Bible that that would be the case. Either way, you're here now, and you want to know what you should do now that all the Christians have disappeared. Side note, don't celebrate. That's the last thing you should do. What can you do? First of all, missing the rapture does not automatically mean you're damned before God. There's still a path to salvation, but it won't be easy. Know that a one world government will come together. And at the time of making this video, it is already happening with the European Union, the UN, and other global entities. Daniel chapter 9 verses 26 and 27 tells us that a prince that shall come forth is not Jesus, but will reveal himself to be the Antichrist. Some have speculated that King Charles may be the prince who was to come from Daniel, but you would know better than me considering I'm gone. Okay, let's get into the top things you need to do now that you have been left behind. First things first, give your life to Christ. What does that mean? Start by reading the Gospel of John and understand what the Gospel is. John was a disciple of Christ and present at his crucifixion, and in his Gospel, you will learn that in order to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must give your life to Christ, repent of your sins, trust in Him, and endure till the end. Doing so will likely cost you your life, but the reward will be eternal. Many believe that the Holy Spirit will not be available to those who are left behind. But this comes from a misunderstanding of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, which again says, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. The passage says the Holy Spirit will no longer restrain the growth of evil, that does not mean he will have no ministry whatsoever. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is assured for every born-again believer, and nowhere in Scripture is that promise rescinded. In fact, in Revelation, John has a vision, and in his vision of heaven he sees a vast number of these tribulation saints who have been martyred by the Antichrist. He says, There before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. When John asked who they were, he is told, These are those who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So as you can see, these tribulation saints were cleansed of their sins because when Jesus came to die, he represented the Lamb of God. And with his death and resurrection, our sins are forgiven so long as we accept him and follow him. Now. People who are saved during the tribulation period will likely be hunted down and murdered. Satan will use everything at his disposal to stop the word of God from being preached during this time. So be prepared to die for the cause of Christ. You will have to endure great hardship, but again, your reward will be with Jesus. Number two, my second piece of advice is read Revelation. Know it word for word. This will be your primary source for the next seven years or until you face martyrdom. Note that the book of Revelation is actually the revelation of Jesus Christ, so it comes from Jesus himself. You will learn that the world is about to go into tremendous confusion. For seven years, tribulation and death and judgment will be poured out on Babylon and Mystery Babylon, which are the false religious system and the false political system. In the confusion, somebody is going to step forward and say, I've got the answer. This is the Antichrist. People are going to worship and accept him. But at the end of the seven year period, Jesus Christ is going to come from heaven and he's going to slay the armies of the Antichrist as they are converging on Jerusalem. Christ is going to come back and rescue Israel from annihilation. This is called the Battle of Armageddon. You may have heard of it. Number three, don't take the mark of the beast. Once you do, that's it. According to Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 18, it says speaking of the Antichrist. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. 
This mark acts as a seal for the followers of the Antichrist and the false prophet, who is the spokesperson for the Antichrist. The false prophet, which is the second beast, is the one who causes the people to take this mark, which is literally placed in the hand or the forehead, and it's not simply a card someone carries around. You will not be able to buy or sell without it, so I would suggest that you find the locations of where food is stored and stock up immediately and get out of Dodge before it becomes too difficult to do so. At the time of making this video, no one actually knows what the mark will be. Some say it will be a chip implanted in our skin, others say it could be some kind of neural implant, and others say it could be merely a spiritual marking when you bow down to the Antichrist. Now, you will know what the mark is and when it's presented because by taking the mark, you will be giving your allegiance to the powers it be, which will be the Antichrist and his evil army. No one can force you to take the mark, so hold fast until Jesus comes and your reward, again, will be great in heaven. As Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their right hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Number four, do all that you can to endure to the end, maintaining your allegiance to Christ. Chances are that if you're watching this video during the tribulation, you haven't fully been deceived. And the great delusion mentioned in 2 Thessalonians has not taken hold of you just yet. There's a reason God has allowed you to see through the veil. Now it's up to you to draw a line in the sand with Jesus. While it is unfortunate that you missed the rapture, you have been chosen for a special cause, to bring people to Christ in the last hour. Your life should be nothing to you now, only a tool to share the gospel and give other tribulation saints courage to stand strong until the end. In the words of Jesus, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Take care and Godspeed.